In this lecture, we'll, we will be examining the causes and effects of an event known as Shays Rebellion, named after a Continental military officer named Daniel Shays. After the Revolutionary War, each state started issuing its own paper currency. This was in response to species shortages, as we discussed in, in an earlier lecture. In general, as more money enters circulation, each individual dollar loses value. The newly formed United States entered a period of economic collapse. In many places, paper currency was nearly worthless, as citizens increasingly rejected paper money for exchange, in commercial exchange. Precious metals such as silver and gold were hoarded. The Depression also occurred after seven years of struggle and deprivation during the war. In addition, there were divisions emerging between farmers who relied heavily on bartering and credit due to the currency shortages, and merchants who often issued the credit and who dominated many state governments. Farmers tried to use their crops to pay debts, but generally this wasn't enough, especially in a depressed market where prices for crops had fallen dramatically. If farmers failed to pay their bills, they were sometimes thrown into jail until the bills were paid. And of course, this is quite a dilemma when you can't get out and do whatever it is you do. Uh, it's even more difficult to pay your debts. Most states pursued monetary policies that hurt farmers, including new taxes, and renewed efforts to collect back taxes. State governments faced tremendous debt burdens themselves in the post-war era, not unlike the depression we find ourselves in today. Farmers all over the colonies rioted in response to foreclosures and jailed debtors. In the state of Massachusetts, Daniel Shays led the revolt against state government. During the Revolutionary War, Shays served as a Continental Army captain. Shays and his supporters demanded tax relief. They wanted relief for debtors. They wanted an end to imprisonment for debt, and they wanted increased currency in circulation. During 1786, these Shaysites traveled around the state disrupting debt collection efforts, especially by closing state courts. Some modern observers like to draw parallels between the current Occupy movement and Shays' Rebellion. Both movements, for example, are, are popular in nature, and both involve protesters disrupting normal government and commercial business to bring attention to their grievances. In 1787, Shays and his rebel supporters went to the militia armory in Springfield to commandeer guns and ammunition. The state militia of Massachusetts met them there and defeated Shays and his followers on February 2nd of 1787. Shays himself fled to Vermont, although he was later pardoned by Massachusetts Governor John Hancock, he of the Declaration of Independence fame. It was apparent that the national government, under the Articles of Confederation, was ill-equipped to handle events such as Shays' Rebellion as well as the, uh, the struggles the country faced in economic terms, Shays and his supporters indirectly created greater interest in a stronger national government, one that could keep order while also addressing the economic problems that led to revolts such as the one led by Daniel Shays. It is not surprising that the call for a national convention to discuss a new constitution happened so quickly after Shays' rebellion.